Hello, warrior orchestra cellos. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good summer. Uh, we're going to be going back to school in about the next two weeks, but I wanted to send you guys uh, some videos to help you start getting this middle school all region music right here uh, down. Because uh, I know there's a lot of parts in here that just like, what? What does that mean? Uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to show you how to play each one of the notes, okay? There's a lot of notes that we haven't played because they're on G and C strings. They're lower notes. And uh, I'll try and go through them as quickly as possible, but I, want, I don't want this video to be like half an hour long or anything. So <laughs> I'm going to try and go as quickly as I can and as efficiently. But the one thing that we do have to realize is that in this song, you have a different key signature. Now, the key signature is one flat. That's what this symbol is. It's called a flat because it's an opposite of a sharp. If you remember, when you have a sharp note, you go up. I know this is down, but tone-wise, we're going higher when we go this way. So when you go up one half step from where the original note is, okay? Like this one right here. This note is usually what we would play as A3. But why does it have the symbol in front of it? Because usually we have music that is two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. In this all region music, these are not there. So instead of playing A3, you're usually going to play A2 for a note that would look like A3. For D3, F sharp, you're going to play D2, F natural. Okay? And then the flat right here is what makes it uh, a little bit more different. Uh, this flat... The middle of the little B, a little cursive B, or italicized B, whatever you want to call it, is on the B string. It's on the B note. It's on the line for B. Remember, great bur or good burritos don't fall apart. So this is a B flat that they have in the key signature. All the notes that you have that are letter B are going to be flat, meaning they're going to go down one half step. The first one is going to be, not the first one in the music, but the first example is on A string, A, B. This is a B, but because we have the key signature of B flat, anytime you have an A1, what looks like an A1, you're going to play A half, okay? The other one is going to be anytime you have what looks like might be a B on G string, G, A, B. This is regular B, B natural, but B flat would be two, and you actually have that right here. That's the first one, okay? It already has a two on top of it. So it's B flat on those strings, plus F natural, D2, and C natural, A2. Don't forget that. Then we have other accidentals, which will adjust the notes depending on where they are. So we'll get to them when we do. The first note that we have is on your C string, and it is D. So whenever you see a note that is underneath the staff and underneath one ledger line, it's C string one. It's D. And it has a staccato marking right there. And an, uh, for a uh, for, uh, forte marking as well. So that means it's going to be uh, loud. But it's also going to be short. So short and loud. The best way to play a short note on your cello is to play the note and stop the bow while the strings, the hairs of the bow, are still on the string. Okay? So make sure it sounds like that. Not like this. Because then it still keeps going. Okay? You have to stop the sound. The next two notes are slurred. We remember, well, we did study this a little bit in class last year, but I had it on the board for like more than half a year. So remember, it's when you play the first note in a bow direction and you play the second one in the same bow direction. The first note where my mouse is right there is open D. So that's going to be up bow because you did down bow for the, for the C1. First note like that. And then you're going to bring your bow over and do an up bow on D. See how my bow is going the same direction for both notes? Every time you see a, a slur, you're going to do that. Two notes, the whatever direction this first note is going, the second note is going to go the same direction. Just put the next finger down, okay? So the first three notes are D, D, okay? Make sure that you get that, okay? And then this fourth note right here is the first one that's affected usually by what we would usually have in our music for cello. And this is the F natural, okay? The D2, not D3, not the second tape, but your middle finger in the middle of tape one and tape two, or between one and three as we call them, all right? So this is going to be F, D2, and then open D again, 
but they're both staccato. So they should sound like this when you play them. One, two, ready, go. Okay, you see that? So D, D, F, D. Okay, I stopped the notes right there. Okay, because they're staccato. This note right here with the sharp, usually that note would be C. Okay, and that would be C, not C string, because C string is way below. Because uh, after open D, the next note down is going to be on G string, the fourth, uh, the, the pinky tape, the third tape. But since it's a sharp, because if, 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 if there was no sharp there, excuse me, it would be G, third tape, or C, C natural. Since it's a sharp, we're going to go up one half step to the middle of third and fourth tape. So after you play... Move your hand a little bit so that your pinky can go in the middle of the third and fourth tape for that C sharp. Okay? So let's go from the beginning all the way to the C sharp. Remember, if it's not slurred, it's usually staccato. Okay? So they're short notes. Don't be playing long notes. All right? From the beginning, starting on C1, one, two, ready, go. Move your hand to that middle position right there, C sharp. Okay, after that we have G, A, B flat, that's a two, G, G, A, B flat, G, and these are slurs, okay? So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, okay? That's how your bow is gonna move, okay? But for these last notes right here, we're starting on the sharp note, the, the G four and a half, Okay, C sharp, then you have a slur on open G, so stay on that string and play G, A, slur up, G, A, and then we have B flat, which is right here, staccato, two, G, okay, two, G, all right? So that's how the beginning measure sounds. Just to show you how it sounds with the recording, here we go, listen to this. G, Four. Okay, so that's measure one right there. That's full speed right there. I'm not expecting you to play it that fast right now, but that's how it's going to sound when we actually do the audition. So starting slower, one, two, starting on C, one, go. Okay, remember, after you do the D, E, F, D, Move your hand so that your pinky can get into the middle position of three and four. Then A, B, two, G. I said A, but it's G. All right? That's measure one. That's only one measure. All right? But all of those notes are involved in the first measure. When you get to the second measure, this first note is F. And it's F on C string, third tape. So you have the same kind of system. Staccato, slur, staccato, staccato. Okay? It has that kind of like... Um, alternation of staccato and slur, all right? Anyways, the second measure, we have F, then we have a slur going from D to F again, okay? So the best way to do this, okay, like that. F, D, F, okay, so staccato, F, D, F. Then we have A right here, which is G1, and then open D. So, four, one, four, one, D. That's the first, what, five notes of measure two? Okay, so F, D, F, A, D. Again, showing you how to do that, starting on C, uh, third tape. Two, ready, go. F, C, F, A, D. All right, that's how that goes. Then, when we go up here, we have F natural again, which is D2. After you play D, you're going to go to D2. Sorry, that was sloppy. Two, then A, because that's the next note. So F, A. This would usually, this is actually a uh, fourth tape, which is D, okay? But on top of this note, we have a one. What that means is that you're going to have to move your hand so that your one finger, your index finger, is on a three, 
because you have to shift because the next note is way up here. The way that you would figure out how to do this, I know you guys don't have the extra tapes and we really, we really actually don't need them. If you have your one finger on the third tape, your ring finger will go on the fourth tape and your pinky would be right after the fourth tape, okay? Just like when you're over here uh, on any string, okay? Do the same thing with one on three on the third tape. Keep that same finger formation because that's going to help you. It would be one, four, three. I'm pointing at it like you can see. <laughs> one, four, three. Okay. So starting right here on C1 or C, C3 again, F. Move. Okay. That gets you all the way to right here. So... Foot F D F A D two A one four three. I can't sing it. <laughs> okay, but that's how that music goes. All right. Um, what I'm going to do also is I'm going to make you guys another video, pl just playing the song all the way through, so you can get familiar with how it sounds, and then look at these videos to help you realize how to play them. All right. Um, so let's play from the beginning all the way through measure two. All right. I'll leave my mouse there so you know where to stop. We're starting on C1, we're starting on D, and it's staccato. If it, remember, if it's not slurred, it's staccato. It's a short note. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so just to go over those last three notes again, after you play A, you play a, th a third tape, or A4, with one, and then your pinky is right above the fourth tape. That gives you that F. Then your three is on E. Okay? After that, you go back down to G1, just like you did over here. So, three. Then we have one, two, four. One, or A, B, C sharp, A. Okay? Now, this is G1. This is B natural. Now, what the natural sign does, this symbol right here, is it cancels out the flat or the sharp or whatever other symbol is connected to it. You just play normally. Now, that's going to mean different things for different notes. But for what we're doing right here, it will be G1. Then B natural, which is you have to stretch your middle finger out to the second tape because the next note is C sharp, just like what you played over here. So you have to put your pinky in the middle of third and fourth tape. This makes it easier because if you're doing one, three, then you have to only stretch your pinky out. Your pinky is not very stretchable. It can be, but it's a lot easier if, if you do that instead of, okay, even I struggle, all right? So once you're here, again, third measure, uh, ring finger on the fourth tape of A string. Move my mouse. Then you have G1. It's a slur. Okay. One, two, four is in the middle. Four, A. Then you have G sharp. Okay. That note would naturally be open G. No finger. But because it's a sharp, we're going to go up a half step from open string. Not to the tape. If that's a whole step. It's going to be G half right there. Okay? So that note right there that I'm pointing at is G sharp. Lowered one. Make sure that your finger is in between the nut and the tape. That's that note. G sharp. And then you go back up to D. And then you have two again. F sharp or F natural. Okay? So all of measure three is starting with your ring finger on the fourth tape of A. So play that first. Then you go back down to G1, slurring G1, G second tape with the middle finger. Then staccato note on the uh, pinky in between the third and fourth tapes. C sharp. Back to G1. 
then G sharp, move your index finger down. That's G sharp. And then D, E, F, D. Okay, those are the notes in order. Okay, uh, let me see if I can play through this. I don't even know. Um, so measures one to measure three. There we go. Starting on D, C1. One, two, one, two, ready, go. Middle. stumble through it right there but as long as you practice those notes in order it should be just fine then we have the last measure for this video which is measure four c sharp again we played it here we played it here it's the pinky in between the third and fourth tapes on g okay so start there then we have a slur going from a g1 back up to the c sharp okay my advice in that in that first part right there would be to um Put your pinky down where it's supposed to be. Remember, lift up your elbow. Pinky. Okay, so do that. Don't, like, what I'm trying to say is don't do this. Okay, that's harder. All right. Try and keep your finger down if you can. So that's the first three notes of measure four. C sharp, A, C sharp. Remember, it's a slur. Then you have E. E, A, staccato both, E, A, okay, so D1, and then A. Then the last four notes right here are a little bit special because you have C sharp, which is your second tape on A, and it has one on top of it. So you're going to put your index finger there, and then you're going to put four on your fourth tape. Then this next one, this is a kind of a weird note right here. It's what we call our harmonic. When you have a little tiny circle above a note in cello music or on any string music really, it's called a string harmonic. And the way that you do that is not by pressing your finger down into the fingerboard on a string. You actually kind of float your finger. Okay, what I am doing right here, I don't know if you can see it. Move this down maybe, right there, okay. What I'm doing, let me put it back in there, okay is that I am um, putting my ring finger and I'm placing it on top of the string, but I'm not pressing it into the wood. I just have it kind of on top of the string. And you should get that note when you're up this far. If you're not up far enough. Right there. They want to hear it as a harmonic note, not as, not as a note pressed all the way down. The good thing about our harmonic note is that you don't have to be exactly in place. So we don't really need to put a, a tape for it. You just have to kind of like remember what it feels like to put your finger there and you'll play it in tune every time. After that, you have four on the next note down. So think about it. You have F, is that, what is this? E, C, D, E, A, it's A. Then we have to play a G with pinky. So you have to move your hand down right there. Okay, so if you're on, if you have your index finger on uh, on the on the fourth tape, excuse me. Uh, I just messed that up. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, C sharp. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna have to play the harmonic. Remember, don't press your finger down. Just have it on top of the string. If you go up too high, you'll lose it. Okay? So just look for that note where you just have your finger lightly touching the string. Then bring your hand down and play the next note down from there. A, G. I will put tapes for you guys to know exactly where to put your fingers, but for right now, this is how you do it. Okay? So let's try. And believe me, I, I'm not I'm not stressing that you guys need to play all this like by next week or something. Let's take our time with it. Okay, we'll take our time with it and we'll learn as much as possible. That's the important thing. But let's let's end this video already because it's already like 20 minutes. Uh, starting at the beginning. One, two, one, 
two, C, one, go. Middle, B flat. Kind of like that. It's sloppy. But that's how you play the first four measures of this music so far, okay? I'm not going to go over the first measures of the second song, D17, because it's a little it's a little bit easier. It, I mean, it, it has one sharp, so we have to realize that. But we can work on that in class. It's not going to be that hard at all, really. But this is uh, the beginning of the all-region music, okay? Uh, like I said, I'm going to send you guys a video of the music just playing so you can hear the whole thing all the way through and then reference this video to help you play each one of the parts, okay? And then I'll take suggestions from you guys like what, 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 what help you need, what stuff you don't understand so I can focus on those in the video or focus on those in class when I see you guys, all right? But uh, start working on the music because everybody's going to be uh, involved in this at the beginning of the year. And I hope you guys continue to have a great summer. I hope your instrument's okay. I hope you're okay. Uh, and if you have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye.